Well, thank you. It's great to be here. My name's Seth Miller. I'm the president of Sanaviv Medical Institute, located in Rosarito Beach, Mexico. And that's about one hour south of the San Diego International Airport. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my journey of international business today. Uh, people have asked me, why did you decide to do international business, of all things? And I was always told my whole life, Seth, you've got to do what you love. And so I was called on a mission to Argentina for my church um, about 25 years ago. And uh, I had this great opportunity, and, and I got to Argentina, and I thought, where, where are the burritos? Where's the rice and beans? Where are the chips? Where are the tacos? I mean, that's how naive I was about other countries in Latin America. Obviously, Argentina is not Mexico, but I didn't know that at 19 years old. I honestly thought those things. I mean, I went as far as to say, why are all the people white here in Argentina? I mean, I, I was so naive. I didn't get it, but that's what I fell in love with. Uh, that's why I started to go down this path of international business was the way that I was brought up of just sort of being so centered on one thing and then getting out into the world and seeing everything's different. And I fell in love with that from every single aspect. When I got to Argentina on this mission, I had a companion. I had to be with this guy 24-7. And, um, you know, I, I didn't really know him much, but he sort of bugged me. Uh, every single time I asked a question of why is this different here in Argentina, he started to put his hand up like this. And he didn't say anything to me. And I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, it, was just, it was just bothersome. This guy always doing this to me. Why is there not a drinking fountain here? What, you know, why is this taxi this color? Why... You know, where are all the brown people? You know, he just, he would do this to me. And I just, I just wanted to learn because I was so new to, you know, experiencing a new culture. And what he finally ended up telling me was that you are now in Argentina. That's all he said. I'm just, and I'm just like, dude, wh what are you doing? I mean, he was rude about it. But I'll never forget that experience because all of those questions I had were the reason why I made a career out of international business. You are now in Argentina. I fell in love with the differences in culture. And so I started to think, how can I make a livelihood of this? I love to learn about other people and why they do things differently and about the language and all these distinct things and I thought, okay, I like business, but I love this. I love travel and eating exotic food and getting to know different religions and different ways people live. And so I fell in love with that and I made a livelihood of it. I have had the opportunity uh, since that period of time for about 25 years to live in 10 different countries and to travel to 60 different countries. And a lot of people ask me, 60 countries, how do you do that? And I don't know exactly how it happened, but what starts happening when you have a vision of wanting to do something, opportunities to begin to open up. And uh, so the first step that I took was as I learned Spanish in Argentina, I thought I might as well leverage that. Okay, so my first golden nugget is do what you love. And if you don't love it, do it anyway until you love it, okay? And so taking a step back to Argentina, while I was in Argentina, I had all these friends, and they were in Paris and London and um, Milan and all these exotic places, and they'd send pictures, and um, on, their, on their free day, they'd tell me about going to see the Eiffel Tower and the London Bridge and all these things I'd always dreamed of, but I was in Argentina. And a lot of my mission there, I was in a place called La Pampa. And if you've heard about that, that's where the gauchos are from, sort of the, the Argentine cowboys. And uh, there's nothing out there. And so I didn't really have any pictures to share. And I didn't have anything to really go do on my day off. And I was sort of jealous of these, these other guys. And so I thought, what am I gonna do when I get back from this mission. 
And so I decided to use my Spanish as part of my career. I thought, how can I leverage this new language that I spent two years learning um, as a part of my career? And so as a part of international business, I decided I'm gonna do something that allows me to leverage something that I've learned. And so that's another golden nugget that I would portray to you guys today is do what you love, okay? And then leverage things that you've learned along the way, such as I did with Spanish. I've used it ever since, almost every single day. And as we started out today, my job's in Mexico, so I go back and forth, so I'm still using that language that I learned on that mission. Um, as my journey went forth, I got married, and, uh, and we decided to take an international internship to Chile, to Santiago, Chile. And I had this really cool internship with Nike. I loved basketball. I loved sports. I loved shoes. I loved the Nike logo. I loved everything about it. And I couldn't wait to get to Chile to do this internship. And uh, this was right in between, um, let's see, I'd been in school for a couple years. And so I think this was at my third year, a summertime, my wife and I moved to Chile for the summer. We thought, okay, let's, let's get this international thing going a little bit. So I searched and searched and searched for an internship. And I had a brother that was living in Santiago, and he lined up this really cool internship with Nike. And so we arrived to Santiago, we got there, and we had no money at all, all right? And he found us this apartment um, that had one, excuse me, it was a house with one room that we lived in. And the room was as wide as my arm span. And that, I'll never forget that because the bed was smaller. And you can imagine my wife and I fitting in this bed every single day. But we loved it. We had no money. We were sleeping in this little teeny bed. It was freezing in the summertime down in Chile, right? But we fell in love with it. Again, going back to just loving wherever you're at. I would have preferred the heat, but I fell in love with the winter during the summertime for me. Um, as we got to Santiago, we learned from my brother, he said, Seth, there's no internship. Nike's backed out. So you can imagine flying. We were going to school in Colorado, flying from Denver all the way down to Santiago. We used all of our money to get there, and there was no internship. And I thought, oh boy, what do we do? Uh, we're, you know, we're going to be here for a month. Now I've got no internship. So I just, I insisted with Nike. I just kept going in and going in and going in and going in. And that's a big part of my personality. But unfortunately this time, it didn't work. My insistence did not pay off and I was wasting a lot of time trying to get in with this internship that I wanted so badly that it already pulled the rug from underneath my feet. And so we decided to go to other shoe companies. And we finally found one called New Balance and they allowed me to do an internship with them. And so through my insistence, which is another golden nugget, don't ever give up, okay? Even though the thing that you think is supposed to happen doesn't happen, don't give up. And that's what happened. Through persistence and moving forward, I didn't give up on this dream and we, we got an internship with New Balance. It wasn't as planned, it wasn't as sexy as I'd hoped to be, but we made it happen. Um, as my journey went on from Argentina to Chile, um, I finally had the opportunity, graduated from college, uh, was valedictorian, graduated with a 4.0, went to a school that no one had ever heard of and, and of my family or friends called Colorado Christian University. And uh, I went there because I had a dream. I had a passion. I wanted to play college basketball. And so it didn't matter where it was. I would have preferred to have played at the University of Utah or at BYU or Weber State, but they didn't give me scholarships. And all I wanted was a full ride scholarship. So I got one to a school no one had ever heard of. But little did I know that it would be a lot harder throughout my career, and I'll address this at the end, of trying to leverage that name, that brand of Colorado Christian University. Um, as I graduated, I had this dream. I was going to play pro basketball. 
I just thought, you know what, I want to play pro basketball. I know how it works internationally. While I was on my internship in Santiago, I started playing with a team down there and started kind of figuring out how it worked. And so I thought, I can do this. I can make any team. And through persistence, um, we found a, a, a team in, all of, in, of all places, Iceland, that wanted to, to pay me to play. Okay? And even though it was 25 years ago, they were willing to pay me $14,000. I'm just like, 14000 I was valedictorian. $14,000 for my first job? And so I started thinking about this and thought, you know what? Let's do it. We're going to go do this. But at that same time, I took a job right out of college, valedictorian, making $8.50 an hour. Okay? It was a brand new startup um, company. And I only took it because we moved back to Utah from Colorado so that we could be close to our family before I started to play pro basketball. Well, that didn't work out. And uh, the only reason I had two jobs at the same time, the only reason I took this particular job is because the other job paid $8.25 an hour. So imagine that, graduating first in your class and getting a job for just above minimum wage. It wasn't really how I had envisioned things. I spoke Spanish. I knew a little bit about a culture in Argentina. I knew how to work hard. I played basketball, and that was it. I was married, and I thought, okay, Let's do this for a short time, and then we'll go, we'll go to Iceland. Well, right during that first year of this company that I worked for called Mirinda, they decided to go international. And, I th- and my eyes got this big. I thought, wow, are you kidding me? International? Because you have to see, there's been a couple times during my life that have really, really motivated me. One of which was my mom on the telephone when I was a senior in high school, she was talking to her friend and I was at the bottom of the stairs and I overheard the conversation. And I remember her saying, Seth's never gonna play college basketball. Well, that fueled my fire. That got me going like nothing else. When someone tells me I can't, that means I can and I will prove you wrong. That is the best motivator for me. So that happened in basketball, but the same thing happened while I was dating my wife Her uncle was a great businessman, and he worked for a a really big company, and he knew business. And I got in this conversation, I was a little bit cocky, and I told him I was going to do international business. And he kind of looked at me, and he sort of laughed, or at least that's how I took it. And it really burned me up when he told me, Seth, it's going to take you at least 20 to 25 years to really be able to get the international position in, this, in, in any company in the world. And I thought, he is wrong. I'm going to prove him wrong. So I always let that little motivator fuel me, really get me going. So spin back to this company, Mirinda. I'm there for a few months. I'm doing this rinky-dink job making $8.50 an hour, just kind of getting ready to go play pro basketball. Uh, during that time, I have, we have our first child. Again, I'm making no money, and I think, okay, what should I do in life? Well, this, this opportunity opens up. I hear through a communication that this company is going to go international. And I think I was 22 years old at the time. And I thought, all right. You know, I can't remember how many employees were there. But instead of crossing my fingers... Right when I heard that, I got up out of my desk and I walked and I knocked and I said, hello, my name's Seth Miller and I would like that job. 21, 22 years old. I had to let the people know I was working hard and I had to think of things, of, of ways I could actually help them out, okay? So when you have nothing else, a golden nugget is, work harder than everyone else, and it will pay off. I guarantee you that. As I did that, um, my hard work got me the opportunity of going to Puerto Rico. Uh, This job to Puerto Rico as a general manager popped up, and everyone else is like, Puerto Rico, we don't want to do that. And I, again, raised my hand, and I said, I'd love to do that position. Well, there was already another person doing the job, 
okay? But I seize the day, carpe diem, right? I seize the day, I put my hand up, and I said, I want that job. Long story short, we had the opportunity to move to Puerto Rico. And the person that allowed me to have this opportunity was my first mentor. That's the next golden nugget. When you get in a position in any company, look for someone that you want to mentor you. Find someone, whoever it is, and get to know that person and ask them question after question after question. My mentor called me the sponge, okay? Because I, I would ask, I would take his advice, I'd learn from it, I'd add on it, and I just did that over and over and over. So by finding someone to mentor me, I also opened up an opportunity because who do you think pushed me to get the job in, in Puerto Rico? That was me. Okay, so uh, at a very, very young age, we're off to Puerto Rico. Me, my wife, my, my, my young son, who was about uh, just turning one at the time, off to Puerto Rico, I had just shown this uncle of my wife's that I was going to do international. I proved him wrong. I was so excited. I got to Puerto Rico, and I didn't have a clue, and I mean this seriously, of what I was doing. I had courage. I had hard work, but now I had a real job, okay? Now I had a real job of running the business in this part of the world, and soon it wasn't just Puerto Rico. It was the U.S. Virgin Islands. It was Jamaica. I was over. I was opening up offices in these countries I'd never been to. And I thought to myself, wow, what a dream job. I mean, I'm, I'm off going to Jamaica, staying in these beachfront hotels. Now, you have to remember, I had no money when I got married, okay? I was just making $8.50 an hour. All of a sudden, I'm an expat. They gave me a house with a swimming pool, you guys. I'm just like, oh my gosh, don't tell anyone, but I don't know what I'm doing. This is awesome. So I had to make sure that I learned and studied and worked as hard as I could to catch up with that position. And that's something that I've always believed in. A lot of people don't believe in that. I've always believed in that. Try to get any position you can, even if you're not worthy of that position, and then prove yourself to be worthy of that position. So that's what I did in Puerto Rico. Yeah, Puerto Rico was, was fun um, because there were so many new opportunities. Uh, and, and like I said, nobody else wanted to live there except me and this company and another guy. And so I got this position, I made the best of it, and within, when, within one year, I got another opportunity through this hard work, through this persistence. And that was to Venezuela, Caracas, Venezuela. But my wife was pregnant. And we're like, hmm, we don't know what the hospitals are like in Caracas, Venezuela. What should we do? And so we decided to have my wife move back to Utah, and I moved off to Caracas. And I was all alone, and I hated it. And I made myself a promise that I would never sacrifice my family for a job because it was so hard traveling back and forth from Caracas to Salt Lake City, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And luckily, I arrived home to Salt Lake the night before my wife gave birth. Um, but the golden nugget there is don't ever sacrifice your family. Don't ever sacrifice your family. It's not worth any amount of money. It's not worth any opportunity. And I loved Caracas. I loved the things that I learned there. But I learned that through that experience, it wasn't worth it to do that. And so my next journey took me to Mexico City, Mexico. Uh, the opportunities kept getting bigger in this company. The company was exploding. Everywhere we went, we were having success. And so not only did they move me to Mexico City, but they allowed me to maintain the Caribbean and Venezuela. Um, and then, you know, we also had Colombia that we opened up. And all these exciting opportunities started to explode. And I'll never forget the day 
that uh, a colleague of mine from our corporate office in Utah came down to Mexico. And we got in back then, this is about, I wanna say 15 years ago or so, maybe more. Um, we got in one of those old VW bugs because in Mexico City, every taxi was a VW bug. It was kind of cool, okay? And they were all green, really bright, vivid green. So we got in one of these VW bugs and I was kind of showing him around and we're driving along and if you've ever been to Mexico, Mexico City, it's one of the biggest cities in the world. We're driving along and all of a sudden the taxi driver goes boom! And he, just like you might see in some crazy movie, he had sideswiped another taxi that was getting too close to him because he was mad at him. And I thought, what just happened? And then he, we drove away. And I'm like, why did you just do that? And why did you give up on the fight? Okay, why did you give up on the fight? Now, sort of a funny story, but these are the little things I love about international business. I have a thousand little stories just like that one. That's never happened to me in Utah, by the way. Never, and I've never heard that story in Utah. But down in Mexico City, taxi drivers were playing bumper car, okay? This guy didn't finish the fight. Uh, and the reason I bring up this story is that in Mexico City, I started learning so many things. I became someone that wrote big, long lists, lists and lists and lists and lists of things to do. I always had a list of something to do. The problem was I could never figure out what to do first. I wasn't a finisher. I was an awesome starter. I had all these experiences and I had learned how to become a great starter. But little did I know, if you start a thousand projects and don't finish any of them, it's as if you've done nothing. I didn't know that in business at the time. I just thought I'm working hard. Remember that lesson, work hard? I hadn't learned this new lesson, this new golden nugget of finishing. Um, and one of the reasons I learned that is because I really didn't have any mentorship happening after my first mentor, I had to mentor myself. And I'm a big believer in educating yourself constantly. So I would read and read and read and read and read and read. Along the way, I was trying to learn another language in Mexico City. So I had these courses going on um, on Portuguese because I had this plan, you know, this big vision. I was going to Brazil next. I always had the next plan going on. But I had learned in one of these books that I was reading that I had to learn to focus. I wasn't getting anything done. I was great at writing lists. I was great at working hard. I was busy. I worked through lunch every single day in Mexico City. But I wasn't getting, I wasn't accomplishing anything. And that started to show up in the sales numbers. And so I learned, of all things, that not only did I need to learn to finish, but I had to also sell those finishing items so I could get to my next destination of Brazil, okay? I had to let my superiors know what I was doing. Everyone knew I worked hard and that only gets you so far, but then you have to have results. And that's the lesson I learned in Mexico City is I needed to focus and get results. And that's something I've been working on ever since. I call it triage, right? The, the, the essence of prioritizing what to get done. And so from that point, I started going to lists of 20 and lists of 10. And today I've learned I'm never gonna get more than three things done ever in a day if I'm that lucky. So now, every single day, I sit down, I get a sticky, and I write down the three things I'm gonna do. And I'm lucky if I get those done because a day is so crazy with emails and phone calls and video conferences and, and you know, crises that come up every single day. But if I make a plan early in the morning and I write those three things down, I usually get those done. And those are always the most important things I get done during the day. And I learned that in Mexico City. So going forward, I finally get the job to Brazil. 
and I'm so excited. I've been studying Portuguese, and that's really what I love in business, right, is new languages and cultures, and I start traveling to Sao Paulo, and I can't decide, am I going to put the, the office in Sao Paulo, or am I going to put it in Rio? I'm really, really excited about, you know, where to go, what to do, and all of a sudden, the company decides, Seth, you're not going to Rio or Sao Paulo. We're putting you in Germany. And I'm like, I don't speak any German. I've been studying and studying and studying Portuguese. And so we head off to Germany. We finally put the office in Munich, Germany. And the biggest lesson I learned in Munich, Germany was that when I got to Germany, the Germans, they scared me, okay? The Latin Americans were really loving and open and I, I just felt comfortable, right? I could speak Spanish and try my Portuguese, but I got to German, where my ancestry is from, I was scared to death. These people were serious, all right? So I got there and I thought, okay, I'm gonna get a tutor, I'm gonna be listening to these CDs every day, I'm gonna learn German that way. And once I get all the rules down, then I'll start speaking. So my entire staff that I hired was bilingual, okay? Pretty good idea, but I didn't practice German. I studied and studied and studied and studied. To this day, it's one of my biggest regrets because I don't speak German to the level that I want to because of that error. When you learn a language, just like when you learn the piano, if all you do is study and you don't play or speak as in German, you're not gonna learn it. And that is the golden nugget, all right? Get rid of that fear once again and take some action. Don't just study. You have to study, but you've got to speak it. You've got to play the piano to get better at it. From Germany, um, Germany, we exploded. We grew sales 700% in Germany within a year. A new opportunity opened up. I learned that golden nugget of results, okay? Cut it down from lists, I started getting results. And as I got those results, more and more opportunities opened up. As I had this opportunity to go to London, England, um, for the first time in this career, I was put with a superior. I was put with a boss. I wasn't the guy in charge. And I had been doing this for, I think at that time, almost 10 years. I was off on my own, reading books, studying, learning, you know, all these lessons that I was learning. But at this time, I took a job where I had a boss, and he was in my office with me, and I got to this beautiful office in the west side of London, okay? Gorgeous place. And I got up there, and I saw there was only one office. And I thought, okay, so I'm out with, in a cubicle with the team, that'll be fun, kind of an experience I haven't had for years and years. And this gentleman, he decided to put me in the office with him. This gentleman was a Harvard MBA. Um, super intelligent, super nice. And what I learned from this new mentor was to treat people as equals. He had no right to treat me that way. He put me in his office. He shouldn't have done that. We went out to lunch together. He taught me anything he could. He treated me as a 100% equal. And I'll never forget that lesson, which is a huge golden nugget. It doesn't matter who's your boss or who's working for you or anything like that. What matters is treating people with respect and kindness and equality. And that's how he treated me. And because of that, I don't think I've ever grown so much in my life as that time that I had in Lon London, England um, with one of my mentors. Spin forward a few years and I've had all this great international experience in this company and a new job and a new company opens up. Uh, the position to be president, they'll give me a seven series BMW bigger salary than I've ever dreamed of, ownership. I just took the job. I just took the job. Golden nugget. I didn't vet the company. I didn't vet the company. These, these things, you can call them carrots, but they were super carrots for me in my life. I thought, 
wow, I'm going to take this thing. It looks awesome. I didn't vet it. The owner of this, this company, super respectable, from one of uh, a very well-known family here in Utah. I didn't vet the company. I took this job, got in it, was excited. We were already doing business in Japan and Taiwan and the Netherlands. I was going to open up Mexico. This is a new dream. I had it. This was it. Finally, ownership in a company. I didn't know the debt load was $10 million. I didn't know the expectation for me was to take the company from 12 million to 300 million in one or two years. I didn't know that the flagship product was underpriced, a product that was selling 90% worth of all of our revenue. I didn't know all of these things. I didn't know that our salespeople were really just investors. I didn't even think to ask these questions because my career, as you've seen, through international business was so focused on other things that now that I was really in charge, I didn't know. I wasn't prepared for all of these challenges. We were growing this business. It was going good, but never to pay back $10 million, never to get up to $300 million in sales. I didn't know that before I took it. So golden nugget vet the company you go to inside and out. Look at those financials. Make sure you know exactly what's going on before you take those carrots that look so good. Spin forward um, from that company. I was let go from that company. I had all these successes. How are they going to let me go? That was something I never thought of ever my whole life. That someone would fire me? I just, I couldn't believe it. I was devastated. They said they didn't have enough money to pay me. And they were right. I was over the company. I knew they were right. And I agreed to it. And we left on great terms. But I didn't know what to do. I had all this international experience. What was I to do? I had five children. I was living in a very expensive home. I had a huge mortgage golden nugget. As you're making money along your journey in international business, put some money away for a rainy day because you will have one. I never thought I would. I was told I would. And because I was told I would, I saved a lot of money for this day. So luckily for me, I didn't have to move. I didn't have to move the kids out of their school. I didn't have a job for six months. Six months. Imagine all this experience, all this success. I thought I'd start a new company. I thought I'd do this, that, the other. I couldn't make it happen. I didn't know what to do. I finally took a job with USANA Health Sciences, one of the best companies I have ever been a part of in my life. But I was desperate. The salary I took was half of what I was just making. It was actually less than half. And there was no BMW 7 Series, you guys. There was no ownership. I had to start over. I had to make a new name for myself. Golden Nugget. When going into a new job, you do have to start over. They don't care about your other experience. They care about you today, and you have to show them who you are. And that's what I did. And I had the opportunity to open up Thailand. We put an office on Champs-Élysées in, in Paris, France. One of the funnest things I've ever done. Uh, we opened up Indonesia. We opened up um, Colombia. For the second time in my career, I got to go to Bogota and open it up. And I loved, loved that experience. Um, but during this time, I went from being a president to being a director. For me, it was a slap in my face. I just, I didn't, I never thought this would happen to me. And for me, this was the easiest job I'd ever done, right? I, I was staying after till six, and people at this company were like, uh, you're staying kind of late, aren't you? And I was thinking, well, I've been working way harder than this all my career. Staying till six is nothing, right? So they started seeing some of these traits in me again. And uh, during this time, I thought, well, I can just sort of go through the motions, or I can do something. And so I created a system while I was at USANA Health Sciences. And I documented 100 pages of how 
to open up a country from A to Z. Because I'd had all the experience, but I'd been sprinting my whole career. I never had time to document. So I finally had the time to document it. And, uh, and that was one of the coolest things, was being able to actually slow down and write down everything I've learned. And so golden nugget for you is when you get a chance, and sometimes it takes years, document. Write it all down because it will be worth its weight in gold when you do. And this document for me is something no one else in the world that I know of have, has because they haven't been through the experiences I've been through. And you will go through the exact same journey. So document those things and it will allow you to do things you've never ever thought of in your lives. Closing up today, I wanted to talk about really my last journey. And we mentioned this, I'm currently the president of Sanaviv Medical Institute. Um, I jumped industries. I jumped into an industry that I was told I could never do. Remember that golden nugget? People told me I could never get out of my industry. And I said they were wrong. But it took a while. And it was hard to get out of the industry I was in. And so I went from one industry into a medical center, a hospital, and I was the administrator. I'm the president of Son of Eve Medical Institute, located in Rosarito, Mexico, and I've never had one day of education or experience. I have 12 MDs that report to me, psychologists that report to me, I have nutritionists that report to me, I have chiropractors, nurses, maintenance, operations, legal, I have this huge team. Why? Because one of my beliefs is that when you go through business, if you learn the right things, it will give you the opportunity to do any industry that you want to do. Uh, and in closing, um, <clears throat> I wanted to just share one success and then some advice uh, that I've recently given to my nephew. In this experience, I had to start all over yet again. And when I took this new job as president, the owner told me, oh, by the way, you have six months to turn this around. You see, the reason I got the opportunity is this, this hospital had not been profitable for years and years and years. I told him I could do it. I really believed I could do it, even though I didn't know anything about a hospital. Because all of the principles of business I think go from industry to industry to industry. But if you talk to someone that's only done one industry, they'll tell you they don't. I'm living proof that they do. Because in six months, we took this hospital and we turned it around and we made it profitable. And for the last three years, we've been profitable and very profitable for this hospital. Because business principles translate from industry to industry. So as my nephew came to me a few years ago, and was going through sort of the same course in life and had just got done with a, a church mission. He said, Seth, okay, I'm going to Salt Lake Community College right now. Yeah, he was right where you're at. And he said, I wanna do what you've done. I wanna do something big. What advice would you give me, Seth? And I thought about it and I thought, wow, I've thought about this a lot because if I started over, I would have done things a little bit differently. I was lucky, you guys. I had a lot of opportunities because of hard work and luck. And anyone successful you ever talk to will tell you the same thing. But I've always competed against people that went to Harvard and Columbia and Princeton and Yale and Stanford. And every single time they get the jobs over me. And it's not fair. And so I told this to my nephew, okay? My nephew didn't have a good enough ACT to get into where he wanted to go, BYU. He didn't have good enough grades, but he knew he had to start. So he started at Salt Lake Community College and he worked his hardest and he got great grades. And then he got good enough grades to go where he wanted to go. So he jumped to the next school and he started studying business. And I said, don't do that, okay? Don't just study business. I did that. Where I want you to do is focus. Remember that golden nugget of focus? I said, I know you don't want to be an accountant, but I want you to get your CPA. 
all right? I want you to graduate in accounting from this great school. Then I want you to go on and I want you to get a JD MBA, all right? He knew how to sell. He learned accounting. He learned business and law, or he's in that process right now, that final step. And I said, every opportunity you get, try to get to the highest ranking school. I could have never gotten in, all right? I didn't have a very good ACT, you guys. I had to use everything else. But this kid was smart, all right? He was really smart. And so I just told him that, that one day, and a couple years later, checked in with him, and he was doing it, and he's still doing it. He was this close to getting into Columbia, but he didn't get in. But through all of his networking, I provided him a list of 100 attorneys and business people. He contacted every single one of them. Networking is a huge key. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter where you go to school or even how smart you are. It matters if you know the person that's giving out the jobs, okay? So I said, become an entrepreneur, because like me, I forgot to do that. And they have what are called the golden handcuffs. When you start making so much money and then you want to be an entrepreneur, it's hard to make that shift. So start doing anything. I don't care if it's a little business on eBay. Become an entrepreneur right this second. Even if you only sell $100 a month, it doesn't matter. It's the habit. So he started to do that, all right? He went and he, he graduated in accounting. He top in his class, all right? Now he's in law school and he's going to get an MBA as well and he's going to try to, to transfer from BYU to Stanford this year. And there's lots of ways to do it if you figure it out. And that will work. Something I could never do. I got lucky. But you sort of have to make your luck for you. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. And so the way I wanted to finish this out is love what you do. Okay? And if you can't, be like me in Argentina. All right? Fall in love with the people and what you're actually doing. Sometimes you don't get to do exactly what you love, but you can fall in love with what you're doing by simply serving others. Uh, and that's how I wanted to end today. So thank you so much. I don't think we have time for questions. I ran out of time, but thank you so much for having me here today.